Hello and welcome to the MA244XXA Peak Power Sensor Graphical User Interface or GUI tutorial series presented by Enritsu. Today's agenda we will simulate a signal using the simulator built into the Peak Power Sensor software, identify the toolbars in the user interface, identify the control windows, and use the toolbars with the simulated signal to exercise the Peak Power software. We will launch the software or the simulator at the bottom of the graphical user interface. I will go ahead and move this over so I can present more information along the screen. The signal types that are available to us are pulse, burst, and narrow pulse. I presented a small diagram on the left so that it's clear what the difference in the waveforms are. Please note that modulation and compression are also available, but we will not use them for this exercise. I have selected the narrow pulse. Now we will begin to simulate this waveform. This will take a minute or a few seconds. Once the waveform is loaded, I'm going to go ahead and close these windows here on the right. Please note that you can now see the narrow pulses. Please also note that when the simulator begins, the markers are available instantly, markers 1 and 2. A useful feature between these markers is that you can move them with your mouse, as shown just now. And please note that this is a trace view where I'm showing channel 1 at 10 dB per division and showing the center along the vertical axis at minus 20 dBm. For this tutorial, we will start at the top of the graphical user interface and move our way down. Starting with the top, we have the file and view sections. For the file, we have load and save two useful functions for any manufacturing or production setting. We also have view which allows us to set the default which can be the load default or save default upon opening the software. As well we have the graphical settings which will allow you to change the font and the colors and the, gr and the traces. Moving down we can see that there's the virtual power analyzer and currently it shows that we're on simulated channel 10. Had this been a real peak power sensor plugged in, you would see the peak power sensor model as well as the serial number. We will begin by looking at the control and window section of the graphical user interface. We will start with the measurement control. On the far left we have CCDF, which is complementary cumulative distribution function, and shows the measure of power level statistics. Next to it is trace view, which we are currently displaying. We have auto measure, which displays three tabulated fields with parameters for multiple pulse measurements. We also feature statistical measure, which has a tabulated list of st statistical measurements like average peak and minimum power. And we also have classical power meter view. We will now move to the right and look at what are con called control windows. Within control windows, there's time and trigger, channel, markers, pulse definition, and statistical control. I'd like to open a couple of these because I'd like to show some or demonstrate some of the functionality within this Peak Power Software graphical user interface. I'm going to go ahead and open the time trigger and the channel control windows. Okay, they're opening on the right. And these are generally properties or parameters that you would like to set whenever you're testing or looking at a waveform. And I can toggle between either one of these here on the bottom and that's a useful feature for any software. I'm going to go ahead and close these control windows now. We're going to move back over to the second field of control and window section. Okay, what's been outlined here is the acquisition control, which features run, stop, single, clear, or initialization. Um, basically, these are functions that you'd want to use um, capturing a waveform, especially a very fast waveform. Next up, we have the memory windows, and that features uh, the ability to save and change the memory as well as display memory and or recall memory. Okay, so now we want to go ahead and we want to spend a little bit more time actually looking at waveforms. And to do that, we have to move to the next set of control windows. 
So down here at the bottom we have trace, pan, and zoom. And here's where I like to spend a little bit of extra time. We have the auto set feature, which basically will zoom in and auto set the uh, waveform of interest. You can see here that it's uh, already set and it looks very nice. Uh, but we have some other features here that are useful within this. So we have the ability to pan or to move the waveform you know, left and right pretty easily. And because the software is integrated into your mouse, um, if I were to go ahead and create a small rectangle here, I'd be able to zoom in pretty easily. One of the nice features of this software as well is that we have the ability to uh, undo anything that we've done already. So if I click this, look, we're back at the original waveform and even the waveform before auto set. Okay, and below trace, pan, and zoom control, we have what's called acquisition status bar. And that basically displays your measured state or measuring state, your sample rate, and your trigger rate. If we move right below that, we have, of course, the available resources. You can see here that there is a a real uh, sensor plugged in and shows the model number and serial number. Uh, of course, we didn't use that today. We used the simulator. Um, and below it, we have an ability to refle refresh the list, um, launch the virtual power analyzer, and of course, do what we did earlier, which is launch the simulator. For more information about the Peak Power Sensor or list of Andritsu power sensors in general, please visit www.andritsu.com. Thank you for joining me for today's tutorial, and this is one of a series of tutorials for the Peak Power software.